Do you know what's more dangerous than a human skin wearing, chainsaw wielding cannibal? That's deciding to sell a statue, but before you pack him up, you actually do a review and then you look at him and you're like, yeah, I don't want to sell this. As the Extreme channel is pushing towards 50,000 subscribers, these are just a few of the statues we are giving away on the journey there. If you want to know how to win one, stay tuned for later in the video. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. Today we're looking at a much older piece from Sideshow Collectibles. This is their Leatherface Premium Format. This is from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And as I said in the intro, I'm actually selling this piece. I'm selling him mainly because he doesn't fit in well with my collection. I actually own three other one-fourth scale classic horror icons, including this Michael Myers piece right here, Sideshow's Jason statue, one of their many Jason statues, and one of their Freddy Premium formats. So this is another one in that line. It is Leatherface, as I said, from one of the most iconic horror movies of all time. If you don't think Texas Chainsaw Massacre is iconic, then you are missing out. It's iconic for so many reasons. Number one, it really kind of set a trend for slasher movies. It was one of the first ones made back in 1974, and it was pretty gruesome. Like I said, involving cannibals and cutting up people, and, and just a really freaky flick. And it kind of led the way for some of these other crazy horror icons, like some of the ones I talked about, and then other new ones as well. So Sideshow Collectibles, I'm not sure how long ago they made this. I bought this about three or four years ago to go with those other pieces. And while he pairs very well, unfortunately, I have them in a cabinet that is too small to contain this guy. As you see, his chainsaw goes way up. It's even out of the screen right now. So I decided I was going to sell him. And I was waiting until I launched a for sale video. I do that from time to time. So make sure you've not only liked this video, but you've subscribed to the channel and you've hit that bell notification. So I was holding off on selling him and then someone posted in a Facebook group, hey, anyone selling this, I'm looking to buy. I reached out to the guy, he said absolutely. So I'm gonna pack him up, ship him off tomorrow. But before I did that, I thought I would do an extreme review. And as I said, that's kind of a mistake because this is a pretty badass statue. So let's kick it off talking about why the statue is so badass. Now traditionally, I do a close-up picture from the bottom all the way to the top, but a lot of what's cool about this statue is all around the sides. So first, let's look at that. Now this entire base has scenes from the actual movie. Here you see where he's actually taking a chainsaw through one of his victims, and the scenes are kind of sketched on a mix between skin. You can see some of the stitching and how it's kind of hooked to the pole, and it almost looks like a wood-like structure. So this next scene right here is one of the most iconic parts of the movie. I don't think that Leatherface has done too well, but it's like when he's coming out of that shed, ready to kill them all for the first time, kind of his, uh, not really grand entrance, but, but main entrance that you see in the movie. And then in between the, the piles of skin that are on there, you see these wooden poles. Here's one of the iconic scenes from the movie. This is actually the exclusive part, the hammer knocking the victim's head, right? I think that was towards the end of the movie, if I recall correctly. But the different shades we're going to talk more about in Paint and Sculpt are pretty amazing. Right here you can actually see some of the stitching. Then your classic Scream Girl that you have in every single uh, horror movie. I'm not a big fan of the Paint and Sculpt. I'll talk a little bit more about that uh, when we get into the Paint and Sculpt of that particular piece right there. And then the Happy Home who would never, you know, we'd never suspect that cannibals are living there. Pretty cool, all this intricate detail just telling more and more of the story, and I absolutely love a base like this. And as you move up, you see the wooden floor that's classic in the house. You see the feathers from the classic scene. You see and you hear me saying you see all the time. However, the exclusive hammer is right there that we just saw in one of the scenes. Leatherface is in a really awkward position because as we move up, your eyes will tell you, not that you'll see, that he's actually wielding his Chainsaw, ready to cut someone open. You see some human bones on a post right over there. He's wearing his apron so he doesn't get any blood on him, even though he's a cannibal, so that doesn't really make sense to me. And his classic 1970 clothes is beneath it. At the top, he's holding the chainsaw over his head. The human mask stitched onto his face. He looks creepy as hell. He looks scary as hell. It is an absolutely fantastic piece. I think it'd be great with just everything from here up but the base really takes it to the next level. So I actually give this a five out of five on the concept. Now traditionally with design, we do an unboxing and an assembly. We're not gonna do that because I'm going to unassemble and rebox him. Honestly, I don't even remember which pieces come apart. So hopefully I don't break anything, but we can get the dimensions and mainly the reason why I'm selling him 
First, he doesn't take up a big footprint here. The base is only about a nine and a half inch diameter. And then the tallest point, which is the chainsaw, 27 and a half inches. And unfortunately, all my displays, 24 or 27 is kind of the cap. And with statue collecting, you run out of display space. So a lot of times you have larger pieces you have to put on top. Now, while he is one of the most iconic villains, he's my least favorite simply because I don't have as many ties to the movie. But everything fits together really well. There are no switch out options other than the fact you can get a regular version or you can get an exclusive version that has this hammer. So design, again, it's a little bit too tall, but otherwise there's nothing really wrong with it. So I give it a four out of five on the design. Paint and sculpt is still done really well despite the fact that there is a lot of mixed media or cloth, which there doesn't have to be paint and sculpt, but it's a decent material. So let's look at that in the close-ups along with everything else. Now starting down at the bottom, while well, you already saw some of this, I love the coloring they used. So it almost looks like these story pictures are coming to life, like they are masked actually on human skin. And you see some flesh tones mixed in with that brown. You can't tell where the wood uh, carving starts and then the uh, flesh that apparently it's embodied onto actually ends. And there's so much detail in these, like even look at the detail in Leatherface's mask and the hair on this victim right there, the stitching of this skin. The home looks fantastic. I really am regretting this. Uh, not a fan of the face on this portrait. Uh, not done that well. You know, there's so much detail in other places than like even here where he's getting knocked over with the hammer looks great. And then here's Leatherface coming out, another close picture for you. That one looks a little goofy as well. I mean, proportionally, he was kind of a weird chunky guy, which I can relate to, but look at the wood on the floor. I think it's done really well. You can see the splintering in the floorboards. It almost looks like in certain lights there's some green, but it's mostly these dark, uh, darker yellows and some browns. And it looks great, even like uh, some nails in the floor. The human bones, you can see right there, also have a great look to them. The feathers are fantastically done, fully sculpted. The blood splatter, I'm not loving, but I'm not hating. I think it's done okay. I like the fact there's not too much of it. Most of it is right here on his apron, and that looks really good, I think, um, with the exception of where it's coming out. I think it should have been splattered a little bit more on those lines. His boots look fantastic. These are fully sculpted, old and worn, very good uh, for the time period. And the same thing with the clothes. You know, I talked about during the concept, very 70s uh, era clothes, the mixed media. It does look like doll clothes a little bit, so it's not like the best quality out there, but it's still done nice. So really, let's look at the chainsaw here first. I think the chainsaw is a little bit of a miss. And it looks a little plasticky, and I think it is a, a lot made out of plastic. I think the blood splatter is good on it, but it looks more like a toy, I would say. But it does have some cool, intricate details. I think they did a nice job with his uh, skin. I'm not a huge fan of the tone, but I think the sculpt on it is fantastic. You can see the highlight in the veins there, the muscles. Apparently, uh, humans are very, uh, what's the right word? Uh, they do a body good by eating humans, but where the superstar here is the portrait. The hair all bunched up together nice. I like the sculpt on that. The paint looks uh, nice and clean. And then his face here looks horribly awesome. Not only the greening of the skin around and the stitches where it's all being held together, but then you can see uh, almost some maybe eye holes or what were cracks up there and then his actual eye holes and just a look of terror with his teeth and his eyes. Really impressive piece. I really, really don't wanna sell this now. I am though, he's going off to a better home where someone can appreciate him more than me, so. But yeah, fantastic job on the paint and sculpt, especially for a little bit older piece from Sideshow. All right, so paint, I think the portrait and the mask is fantastic. I think the base is fantastic. Like I said, I'm not a huge fan of the flesh tones, but they're still good. I think the paint's a four out of five for what we can see. And that would also include that mixed media or the clothing. Sculpt, I think it's equally as good. It's really, really impressive on the base. And I, like I said, I like the physique in his arms. 
Chainsaw looks a little bit fake. That's more of a design material thing, I guess, but I think the sculpt's also a four out of five on this piece. I think this piece is really undervalued. I should have raised the price when I was gonna sell it, but it's too late. But let's talk a little bit about that value. I'm not gonna give it a ranking because it came out so long ago, but they made 3,000 of these. 1,000 came with the hammer right down here, and then 2,000 did not have the hammer. They were just the regular. Both retailed at $499 plus shipping and tax. Now, I don't know what he goes for in the aftermarket. I sold him for a little above 600. I was just trying to make my money back. So overall, you know, I really, really like this statue. It's a shame on the height thing. I just could not make it work, unfortunately, in my collection. And like I said, I have a more of a tie to Michael Myers, Jason, and Freddy than I do him. So while I am selling him, I will miss him. And I still think overall, he's a four out of five statue. I'm still really impressed. But let me know in the comments, have you ever sold a statue you really liked, but you sold it simply because of the size or you couldn't display it? And the reason I asked you to comment is because of this. We will be giving all of these statues away, plus additional ones at every 5,000 subscriber milestone. To win one of these statues, all you have to do is make sure you've liked this video, you've subscribed to the channel, you've hit that bell notification, and then just drop a comment below. Every 5,000 subscriber milestone, we are going to do a random drawing and pick a random comment and give one of these statues away, plus some additional ones I'm not showing right now. The more videos you comment on, the higher your chances are to win. So thanks for tuning in, guys. I know this is an older piece, but it was cool going down memory lane, not only seeing Texas Chainsaw Massacre when I was young, but just saying goodbye to the statue. So make sure to hit the like on your way out because I really appreciate it, and I don't know why I'm talking funny, but subscribe too. Take care, guys.